We're just waiting for people to come into the webinar. Oh, no, yeah. So I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, I might start. It's 10.31 and we said we start at 10.30. My name is Sandra Farser. I'm a Community Development Officer at Northern Beaches Council. Welcome to today's um, Scam and Fraud Awareness webinar for seniors. It's brought to you by the New South Wales Police Crime Prevention Unit, Northern Beaches Council, Hornsby Council Sector Support and Development, and supported by the councils in the Northern Sydney region. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of these lands on which we gather and show my respect to elders past and present and other Aboriginal people who are here today. The aim of today's webinar is to provide you with information that will increase, our, increase your awareness of what types of scams are operating in our community, help us understand how scammers operate so we can protect ourselves against them and know what to do if we experience a scam. Northern Beaches Council has instigated this webinar as part of its community safety plan in which older residents were identified as being more likely to fall victim to scams and fraud. The fact is scammers are constantly involving how they trick us in parting with our personal information and our money. Our presenter today is Senior Constable Sandra Freyetta, who is a Crime Prevention Officer from the Northern Beaches Police Local Area Command. If you think of a question you'd like to ask during the presentation, just click on the Q&A at the bottom of your Zoom screen and type your question in the pop-up box. We will pass on your questions to the presenter towards the end of the presentation. That's it for me. I now hand you over to Senior Constable Sandra Freyetta. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, scams. So just bear with me a moment. We'll get the screen up and running. Okay, so okay, so today, so this this week is um, crime. It's it's uh, crime prevention week, and also it's scam awareness week. So my name's Mark City Constable Freda. I'm here at uh, DY Police Station. So today. The aim of our workshop is to promote, promote awareness of the types of scams occurring in our community. And we want, to, want you to understand how scams operate and how you can protect yourself against them and also know what to do if you actually experience a scam. So cyber crimes are crimes where computers uh, and other types of technology are used to uh, commit offences. And a scam is something that is illegal uh, for you in making money and also it involves tricking people. There are many different types of scams that involve identity theft, whereby criminal, criminals can access your personal information and use them to steal money or obtain other types of benefits. You can be scammed by online, over the phone, by post, advertisements, or even in person where someone comes to your door. So crime in Australia, uh, identity crime in particular, at least one in four Australians have been a victim of uh, identity crime at some time in their life. Um, it is up. 13% uh, from last year, and this could be attributed to COVID, uh, more people working from home, and also more people on the internet. So ScamWatch reports that the most common methods of uh, cybercrime are used by the telephone, number one at 48, over 48%, uh, text message at over 33%, and uh, email at uh, over 9%. So in the next couple of slides, I'll show you the percentages as a graph. So here we have a graph on the age group and the amount lost. 
So you'll see from the screen here that uh, over 65s and 55 to 64 are, are most vulnerable. So the 2021 data on Scam Watch Australia shows that the older members of the community are more likely to be victims of a scam and are likely to lose more money from those scams than other members of the community. This could be attributed to older people may have more assets or sometimes are less aware of online security than the younger generation. As mentioned earlier, uh, in how scams are occurring, you'll see that the number one here on the left-hand side of the screen is using your phone. Okay, so the amount lost is over $66 million for the, for the financial year from and the number of reports are over 119,000. Uh, number two with the most reported is uh, 50,000 reports and then number three is over 30,000 reports. So scammers are constantly looking for new opportunities to exploit you such as using online shopping scams or MBN scams, or even some types of charities and of late the COVID-19 scams. But the common element is that it's tricking people uh, into giving them your personal information. So if you can learn how the scammers operate, then you can learn how to protect yourself. So identity theft is uh, used in many forms, and that includes people stealing money from little boxes or stealing your information online. So these scammers will steal your person, personal information, including your name and address, date of birth, uh, driver's license, details, passport, Medicare, the list goes on. Also online accounts, usernames. So if you have a uh, social um, internet like Facebook or something like that, people can actually gain those information and log in with your details. So if someone steals your identifying information, they may be able to access your accounts or use your identi identity to commit fraud or even open up bank accounts in your name. So make sure if you're receiving a credit card or a license in the mail, that you look out for it in the mail. If you haven't received it, be sure to contact that provider. So how to protect yourself from identity theft. So make sure that your litter box is locked, so having it with a key. Be sure you clear it out regularly or have someone trustworthy to clear it out for you if you're away. Ensure that when you have uh, personal documents such as bills or insurance, make sure you rip them up in small pieces so your details cannot be identified. Don't use public Wi-Fi in public to do your public banking or access any sensitive information. You can use a VPN network. Uh, and by using a VPN, it's a virtual private network and it gives you online privacy. It will keep you anonymous by creating a private network from a public connection. So if you're in a public connection, you can try using that. But the most important VPN services, they establish uh, an encrypted connection and you can get greater privacy uh, than even a secure uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. If you want to know more about it, you can Google VPN and you can get some more information from there. Another thing is to, if you're using social media, is to limit the top of or the amount of personal information that you share. So don't disclose your birthday, uh, your, your whole address. So, because if you're going on holidays and you tell people you're going on holidays, then they'd be able to know where you live and come to your house. And also don't accept friend requests from people you don't know. Hacking. Well, hacking occurs when a scammer can gain access to your personal information by using technology to actually break into your computer or mobile device or through your network. So hacking involves sending emails with attachments or links that may appear legitimate and that when you open them, it'll install malicious software and uh, it could infect your computer. So some common examples of hacking is 
adware, and that's if your computer has been infected with adware, advertisements will automatically pop up on your computer. You have spyware, where it spies on your activity without your knowledge, and it can spy on your keystrokes, your data, and your information. So if you're accessing your internet banking, it could actually work out your PIN number or your account details, and then they can access it themselves. Ransomware is another type of hacking where it encrypts your computer or, or your device, and it also freezes it and, and forces you to pay a ransom to have your computer unlocked. So what to look out for? So if you've got strange icons or files on your desktop that you cannot remember downloading, if your computer is freezing or crashing all of a sudden, if your files have been modified or deleted, or if you get a pop-up screen that appears on your computer with a, it might have um, a padlock on there or something like that. So if you think that your computer has been infected with some sort of malware or malicious software as they call it, install and run an anti-malware uh, and a firewall software. And this may help fix your minor infections. Otherwise have an IT specialist to fix your computer. So phishing scams are attempts by scammers to trick you into giving out your personal information, such as your bank account numbers, passwords, and credit cards. And this is via email. So phishing emails often present as being from a legitimate organization, such as a telecommunications company, uh, utility providers, or government department, or even banks, financial institutions. So ScamWatch indicates that phishing is far the most common reported type of scam in Australia, but you will see later in uh, how it compares with how much money is lost compared to other types of uh, scams. The signs of phishing is uh, messages that are designed to look genuine and they often copy a format used by a legitimate organisation that scammers are pretending to represent. And it could also include their branding and logo. So the example down here would be, you've got the HTTPS and then you underneath it, you've got the HTTP. So the S indicates that the, the website is secure and the one without the S means it's unsecure. So just be wary if you're doing online banking or accessing shopping websites where you're having to pay money that you're actually on a secure website and look for the padlock closed and it will tell you that it's secure if it's not closed it'll tell you that it's not secure and that could mean that it could possibly be watched by someone who is trying to scam you so in this particular example you uh see this is an email from the, the uh, allegedly from the australian government the taxation government and if you hover over the sender, you'll see that the email address is not legitimate. It says it's info at virtuoso.eu.com and on behalf of the Australian Taxation Office. So that would indicate that it's actually a scam. It's not from the ATO. And often you may find that uh, these scam emails will demand urgent payment and to avoid any penalty or missing out on a financial reward. It's important that you check the sender of the of the the email as the email address may not be related to the organization as you can see from this example and also look out for spelling mistakes as an indicator that it might be a scam email so on this particular one there was a telstra a scam that was going through for phishing uh, i've just highlighted there in the red circle you probably can't read it but it says dear customer this is actually a scam uh, phone bill. So things to look out for when you're getting these type of bills is the unaddressed or generically addressed email such as dear customer. Normally you would, it would be addressed in your name. Look for uh, badly written emails with broken sentences, spelling mistakes, that sort of thing, if the words are in foreign language. Also, emails that show account information that don't actually match your Telstra account details. 
You can refer to your My Telstra account for the accurate information to ensure that it's uh, uh, true and correct. The email also might request to get credit card or password details from you by either replying to that email by clicking a link and filling in a web form. Uh, look for those suspicious URLs at the top of the page that don't actually direct you to that uh, to the Telstra website. Also, there might be a, a file that's included called a zip file or an executable file, and they may have the suspicious attachment. So EXE files are executable files. When you download programs, they are executable files. And some files you do download are, uh, are legitimate files. You might want be installing a, a program that you've purchased. And sometimes it might come in a form of a zip file where you have to unzip it. And then the executable file will be in that file. But once you click that executable file from that unknown source, you may be opening malicious software. So be very wary of that. As I mentioned previously, with the top 10 scams reported, you'll see that the most popular one there is the phishing scam, phishing, where you're receiving it by email. There was uh, over 62,000 reports made. So in the next slide, we'll have a look at uh, the different types of the top 10 with money lost, and you'll see where phishing actually comes in the top 10. And I'll show you what the most reported amount of money lost is. So the top 10 by the amount lost, you'll see that the top one is the investment scam where the amount lost is over $129 million. You also see that the second most popular one there lost is over $41 million, it's dating and romance. And the bottom, as you'll see, the second last top 10 is the fishing with the amount of money lost at $3 million. So here you can see that the investment scams have less people reporting. And I'll show you, back, I'll pop back a screen. So investment scams are down the second bottom uh, uh, of your screen there, maybe under, under 10,000 uh, reports in the year but you're losing a lot more money uh, than the phishing scams. And that also could be due to the amount of money for investment scams could be due to people not reporting it because they're too embarrassed or there are, they are reporting it, but they're losing a greater amount of money. As you can see, the dating scams didn't even make the top 10. And again, this could be due to people being embarrassed to report that they've been scammed by someone online. Investment scams account for the greatest financial loss from among Australians in, in 2021. So investment scammers may promise high and quick financial returns. They may offer free tax benefits at low risk investments. Well, they may even suggest to have inside information and invite you to invest for the, in a public float. And there are many types of investment scams in Australia. The investment offer might be completely fake. The investment does exist, but the money you give the scammer doesn't actually go towards the investment. Or the scammer says they represent a well-known investment company, but they're just lying to you. So if you're considering invest, investing, always check uh, if the financial advisor is registered. And I've, I've attached a, a link which you will have available to you at, at the end where you can actually check to see whether they are registered. And also you can have a list of companies not to deal with. And I'll give you an example. There was a 65 year old male who lived alone in retirement. So not long, after, not long after his wife died, he received an unexpected call from an, for an investment opportunity. It was a cold caller and he sounded very professional and, to, and speaking about investment matters. He answered all the, uh, the gentleman's questions and he even followed up with uh, calls from a senior advisor. So over the next 12 months, he gained, he gained that confidence and made several um, deposits initially starting at $10,000. He was then referred to a professional looking website and he was set up with a login account, which showed his money increasing in value as the market went up. 
He was quite confident that he was receiving those invested funds and he invested up to a total of $200,000. So he only realised that the investment was a scam and when he went to log on to his website, he could no longer access the account. He then researched the company and found that they weren't registered with the Australian Securities Investment Commission and he was too embarrassed to actually report that to police. So when he did actually report it uh, to the... He reported it on a different uh, at a different area, and it was then notified to police, and that's how we discovered that uh, he'd been fraudulently um, taken advantage of. This one in particular is becoming quite popular now with iPhones and Android phones. It's called misdelivery, the call or voicemail, they're called flu bot scams. So these are text messages ask you to tap on a link to download an app and track or organise a time for delivery on a parcel that you may or may not have ordered, or you'll hear a voice message. You know, these messages are fake. There is no delivery or voicemail and the app that uh, is actually malicious software. So in these particular examples here, you can see that a text message was received saying, click on this link to check your package, uh, another one to check manage your delivery, uh, pending packages, last chance to pick up your package. So if you receive one of these messages, don't click or tap on the link, just delete it immediately. And I would believe a, a lot of people would receive these types of messages. Even I actually receive every now and then these type of messages. So what happens if you click on the link? Uh, clicking on the link uh, could lead you to downloading malicious software on your phone. If you do download it, act immediately if you've clicked on the link, uh, your password and your online accounts could be at risk from hackers. So there's a, a link that you'll be able to access on the ScamWatch website where there are steps on how to remove that particular software. Remote access scams are phone scammers who pretend to be from a large telecommunication company such as Telstra, MBN, Microsoft, or even an IT support service. They'll try to convince you that you have a problem with your computer or internet, and they'll try and get you to install software program to try and fix the problem. Once you install that, this gives them control of your computer and they'll either steal your information or demand money for, to return access to you. Here's an example of a 91 year old male from our local area. He was called from an Indian sounding male and his name was Ian Nicholas, who stated that his bank details had been hacked and he was going to, and he was calling to, to fix the issue. So during the call, the elderly male was deceived at downloading software to his computer and would give access to the caller. So from there, Nicholas accessed his bank accounts and transferred $3,000 to another bank account. He then tried to uh, transfer further, further funds, but this was actually picked up from the bank online and that transaction was blocked. The elderly male could see these actual transfers happening in real time and he was uh, alerted by the, his service provider or his uh, financial institution that uh, he was being um, fraudulently uh, taken advantage of. And when he questioned Nicholas, the call ended. So this gentleman lost $3,000. So tips for staying online would be to, to use strong, strong passwords, use face ID or fingerprint ID, ensure that your passwords are a minimum of 12 characters and include upper and lower case symbols and numbers. Have a very good antivirus software and keep it up to date and ensure that your Bluetooth on your phone and your Wi-Fi have passwords, secure passwords. So some tips to try and stay safe online is to don't open attachments unless you're certain that they are legitimate. Don't follow links from emails or provide personal information. Go directly to the actual uh, website that you're dealing with. Don't allow anyone any remote access to your computer unless you've engaged from a reputable IT support company. 
Check the email addresses from the senders at the top to make sure they say who they are. Check it, make sure that the website is secure. So look for that locked padlock if you're looking at buying anything online. And beware that if someone contacts you and demands urgent payment, be sure to know that that would be a scam. So there are other types of scams uh, uh, that rely on tricking you and manipulating you into paying money or volunteering personal information rather than hacking your computers online. And they include dating scams, classified scams, shopping scams, technician scams, there's lots of different scams and of late the COVID-19 scams. So a vaccination scam is uh, that has been going on is scammers requesting payment for vaccines or early access to vaccines. Scammers offering mail to mail vaccines to you, offering you to pay money to invest in a Pfizer vaccine or creating fake surveys that relate to winning a prize for early access. So if you've been scammed or have been scammed, you can make a report at ScamWatch and also go to their website and you'll get that information at the end of this uh, presentation. So dating and romance scams. Uh, here we got many scams who will take advantage of people looking for romantic partners via dating websites and social media. They'll pretend to be prospective companions. They'll play on your emotions and triggers to get you to provide money, gifts and personal details. And these examples of the platform used are Facebook and various other dating apps. So romance scams and dating scams is also known as catfishing. And they'll, they'll pretend to be interested in you in order to gain your personal information. And in some cases, it's even hard to tell if the person is real or not. In many cases, they may go to elaborate lengths to make the person believe they are real. And in some instances, they may even contact you uh, via telephone. So scammers to particularly, typically create fake online profiles designed, designed to lure you in. They may also use find fictional names or falsely take on identities of real trusted people, such as military personnel, aid workers or professional workers aboard. And dating scam accounts are, are for a significant amount of uh, account for a significant amount of money lost in Australia. So once they've gained your trust, and it could take months, it could take a year, they'll then start asking for money and gifts. A quick example for a romance scan. So this happened in August this year, uh, where a young lady met a man on a dating website, and a Tinder website. They were getting on very well. He told her that he, uh, his name was Mike and he grew up in Hornsby and he was working as a fly-in, fly-out from Indonesia and he was stuck there due to the borders being closed. He gained her trust, started sending money to her, to him, sorry, and then he said if once he received the money, he could return to Australia. She made nine transfers totaling 34, over $34,000 and she lost that money. So online shopping scams and classified, classified scams involve scammers pretending to be legitimate sellers, either with a fake website or a fake ad on a genuine website. And charity scammers impersonate genuine charities and ask for donations, either door-to-door -door or online. They will often exploit recent natural disasters and tragedies such as bushfires. And they may have fake email or identification cards claiming to be from an established charity such as Red Shield or World Vision. So if you've been scammed, make a report to ScamWatch and also to police, and you can find out more information on, on ScamWatch. So a quick example for a, a Facebook, was on Facebook marketplace, a puppy dog scam. Lady found uh, a page called Australian Shepherds for Sale and contacted them via Facebook Messenger. After back and forth messaging, the lady paid the scammer deposit for $500 via direct bank transfer. The last contact lady made with the scammer via Facebook told her that the journey had stopped in Madawi to DY 
they were stopped by RSPCA rangers who confiscated the puppy. The scammer then asked the lady for more money in order to get the puppy back, to which the lady refused. She thought it was sus, contacted police. Police made inquiries and found out that the phone number was a, pro a number from the St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne. So make sure that you buy from legitimate businesses. If the price or the value is too good to be true, it probably is. Classified scams such as carsales.com, you get emails from prospective buyers offering ridiculous amounts of money, but but they want you to buy the but they want you the car before they pay the cash. So don't send any money in advance. The websites are legitimate, like car sales are copy legitimate websites, but the people who are answering those ads aren't. So beware for fake websites which advertise that which with advertisements, sorry, advertisements on Facebook offering cheap products. Do your homework, make sure that it's actually legitimate. Scammers impersonate technicians and tradespeople online via phone and even door to door. They may impersonate telecommunication uh, officers or MBM workers, and they'll seek payment for that service provision, or they'll prevent the service, or they'll say that your service will be disconnected. Scammers have also gone door to door offering discounted tree trimming services or painting and gardening service, and then they insist on a higher payment. So there have been cases where tree treeing businesses have offered discount rates today only and were in the neighbourhood. And on, on compl upon completing the job, they are asking for more money on the grounds that the job was bigger than they thought. And occasions they have taken older community members to the bank to even get money for them. It's been quiet during the lockdown, et cetera, but summer is coming, borders are opening. Be on the lookout and if in doubt, speak to a trusted friend or a family member. So protecting yourself against technicians and trade scams, NBN and other techni technicians carry ID cards and you can request to see it, but also pay, a, pay close attention and ensure that these, these uh, identifications are not fake. So never give an unsolicited caller who claims to be from NBN or a telecommunication, telecommunication company any remote access to your computer and ask family or friends to recommend a trusted technician uh, if you need one and don't accept door-to-door -door offers. Do an independent check online about tradespeople and service providers and don't go to the website on the card they gave you. It may be fake. Sometimes you may uh, get text messages for unexpected and easy money. So there are a range of scams that involve tricking people into believing that they will get rich quick. This includes scammers telling you that you have received an inheritance from someone overseas or you've won a prize or, an, or you're getting an unexpected tax refund. Okay, so there's text, text messages down here saying one, I think you've won 6 million 500 pounds uh, and just click on those links. Those links are mouse software. And so ensure that you just delete these particular messages. The one on the left is from ATO saying that you are getting a refund and telling you to log in with the phone number. Do, uh, do not log into these. You'll be uh, scammed and you will lose money. So this is just an extract of something that uh, for someone apparently uh, would uh, be winning, uh, receiving $22 million from an un unknown uh, person living overseas. And they're wanting some information in regards to uh, sending them some money and they can release the, the money. And the solicitor will actually uh, receive $11 million and the other 11 millions will, will go to yourself. So these particular ones would, you would get in the possibly in the post. Uh, so if you get, get something that relates to being uh, receiving money for uh, a long lost cousin who's left you millions and millions of dollars, it's a fake. So just rip that up and throw it in the bin. 
So wrapping up on that, so scammers, they are constantly adapting to new technologies, but their main aim is, is the same, is to steal your identity and steal your money. So scammers can quickly exploit emerging issues, again, MBN scams, Bitcoin investment scams, um, bushfire scams, and their aim is the same, to steal, again, your identity and assets. So if someone contacts you and asks you for details, always independently check online and verify they are legitimate and also uh, report the suspected scam. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So I'll just give you some quick tips. So be aware that scams do exist and know who you're dealing with. Don't, op uh, don't open suspicious text messages, pop-up windows, or click on links or attachments in emails. Delete them immediately. Don't respond to phone calls about your computer asking for remote access. Hang up. Keep your personal information, mobile devices, and computers secure. Ensure that your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi have different passwords. Because if they access one and you have the same password, they can access them all. Maintain an up-to-date antivirus software. Don't use public Wi-Fi to access secure information. Review your privacy and security settings on your social media. Don't share details that reveal your identity. Beware of requests for personal details or money. Be wary of unusual payment requests. Be careful when shopping online, use secure sites, verify the identity of the integrity of all service providers. So we've got an acronym here. Uh, so S is stay safe. Don't give out your personal information to people, places and don't and places you don't know or haven't verified. Don't meet up with someone online. It could be dangerous. Accepting files, accepting emails, files um, from people or companies you don't know can cause you a lot of problems later down the track. Make sure you've got reliable information before you believe it's the person or website you are dealing with. And tell someone if you've been scammed, be sure to tell someone. Report it to police, don't be embarrassed as it can happen to anyone. So there, here are some, some uh, places where you can get uh, informed if you've been scammed and places you can call. And this information will be available to you at the end of the presentation. If you want to report a crime, you can do it through DY Police Station, uh, Police Assistance Line, we've got Crime Stoppers, and we also have an online community portal which you can access through the uh, New South Wales Police website. So what did we achieve in our workshop? So we promote awareness of the type of scams that are occurring in the community, understanding how scammers operate so we can protect ourselves and know what to do if we've been scammed. That's the end of my presentation. And now I can hand it over to you, Sandra. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for that, Sandra. That was a lot of information there and things that we need to look out for. I, I know that I'm become a little bit more paranoid in recent weeks, especially with all the COVID scams um, that are around at the moment and all the flu bots and what have you. Um, has anybody got any questions? I don't see any questions in the, in the um, question panel. We do have about 15, 20 minutes for some questions. Does anybody, would anybody like to ask a question of Sandra after her uh, presentation? You can go to the Q&A at the bottom. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see there's a Q&A with two little um, kind of thought bubbles there or text bubbles, and you can ask a question there. Uh, yes, uh, we, we will be emailing the slides. We will be emailing a, 
recording and we'll be emailing some handouts and also give a um, some links to the police crime prevention resources on their website. So yes, we will be doing that. Are there any other questions? Hold on, here's one question. Sandra, is it dangerous if I give a stranger my bank account number without anything else? I wouldn't give your bank account details to anyone. Uh, the only time you would give bank account details if you're on a legitimate website where you're actually paying for a product. I would avoid using a direct credit to someone's account if you're purchasing something on, on the marketplace. Uh, do not do a direct transfer to anyone's account. Uh, it's always the best way to do business on those types of uh, platforms is cash on delivery, come and collect your product and you'll get paid and vice versa. I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you, Sandra. There's some more questions. There's a thank you. Um, someone's asked, is there any way to stop the constant calls from overseas uh, already on the these are still seem to yeah. be coming through, even though the person's already on the not to call register. Yeah, it's very difficult. Um, you'd have to call your, your phone provider to see if they call them. Otherwise, you can just block them on your um, on your phone, whether it's on a, is it on a home? I'm not sure whether it's on a home phone. It's on a home phone. You can tell your service provider to block any calls uh, from there or just block them on your phone. Uh, when that, when the actual call comes. Okay, there's another question here, which is a really good question that we all think about sometimes, I'm sure, I know I do. Any tips for remembering multiple <laughs> passwords for seniors? <laughs> yes, well, yeah, it's, a, it's a difficult one because, it, again, they don't the, like you having the same passwords because if you have the same password and you manage to get hacked, well, then that one password, they can access everything else. So you probably would have to write it down somewhere and keep it somewhere secure. Yep. Don't uh, put it on your phone. Uh, whatever you do, don't, don't have anything on your phone with passwords and whatnot because if you lose your phone and someone gains access it or if your phone gets hacked, they can access your details through there. Yep, that's something all of us struggle with, mm. seniors or not being a senior. Yeah, exactly. And we all struggle <laughs> with that one in the modern age. Um, someone's asked, is it safer to pay via PayPal? There is a PayPal it, it, it is a lot better to use uh, because if you don't receive your product or if there's something wrong, you can do a claim through PayPal. There's obviously a waiting period. So you need to obviously deal with that person who you've bought your product from to try and get a refund. And if you're unsuccessful, then you can go via PayPal. Uh, it is a lot more than doing a direct deposit, definitely. Okay, got a few more questions. Uh, another interesting one, given that we all get them. Can I stop the SMS messages asking me to click on a link? The only way to do that is to block it on your phone. So depending on what type of phone you have, if you've got a, an Android phone or an iPhone, there, there are ways to, to, to block that phone number and then it'll either go, if it's a text message, uh, it might be difficult. I'm not too sure actually with a text message, but I know with phone calls, you can you can block that number and the phone, will, it'll just go directly to missed call. Okay, thank you for that. There's some more questions. When a call comes into your mobile unknown uh, from an unknown number. Yeah, should I answer it? I think it was. Should I answer it? Is that what you said? Um, uh, hold on. I've lost my question here. Is it if a call comes from an unknown Oh, there's a number. whole lot of. Yep, here we go. Sorry, I lost it. The um, question, question panel moved up. When a call comes into your mobile from an unknown number, should you answer it? Uh, <laughs> depends. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I and mean, it's also it sorry. There's another bit here. If you click voicemail, is this safe? I guess that's. It depends. So if you've got an unknown, if you've received a call from an unknown, sometimes people like to keep their numbers private. Uh, so 
a lot of times these people that are scamming you, uh, trying to send that recorded message or whatnot, it doesn't come from an, un an unknown number. It normally comes from a number that's visible and it might be an 03 number. Uh, so a lot of the times if it's coming from Melbourne, well, the number comes up as a, a Melbourne number. Uh, you don't have to answer it. If, if it's most important, they'll leave a message and then you can check it on voicemail. I know that's what I do a lot. Yeah. Um, there's another few questions here. They're coming in thick and fast. I, someone's asked, <laughs> I was contacted by inverted commas Telstra, Telstra. Oh, yeah. saying my NBN was faulty and I contacted Telstra in brackets India and they sent a new modem, insisted I connect it and it is currently running under test. How can I verify this is legit, legitimate? That's an interesting one. Well, you need to contact Telstra. Uh, long as, so they've said, I couldn't tell you. All I would say is is call Telstra to find out what this, what the problem is. Yep, that's an interesting one. Um, another question is: Is it safe to have passwords in a vault? I guess that's that thing that you get on your computer where it all saves. Personally, I don't use it. I try and remember it or it's do it somewhere else. But I I know a lot of people use that. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you as to whether you have it in a in a vault. Uh, I can't say either way. I mean, I said I keep my I, I save my passwords, but in that in that uh, where the computer actually saves a password for you, but it, it, it's up to yourself. As long as you're not actually recording it on a, I think not recording it on a in a, in a document or somewhere or on your phone where you, someone can actually click on it because you need access to actually access that vault. So you need to actually put an A password in to, to access that. As long as that password is not the same as the other passwords, they need to be different passwords. Okay, thank you for that. Another question about N N NBN type issue. NBN sends text messages often once a week saying that they are maintaining work they're doing work on such and such a day and such and such a time. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I get them too. <laughs> to my mobile, what does it mean? Is it a uh, scam? No, they're, they're, they're just saying that they're actually doing work on the line out there at NBN. I've received two that they're doing, they're doing work at, in the middle of November. Um, they're not saying send me any details. It's just an advice that your, your internet might be down for that particular time. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, is the Google hard password safe to use? Oh, I don't know about that one, but Google hard password. Yeah. Oh, I'm not too sure what that means either. Yeah, uh, so that's something maybe we can provide some info on. Uh, never heard of it. I don't know what it actually is. Google hard password. Maybe if they can elaborate on that, what that actually means. Something could they could be using. Okay. Um, all right. We can't answer that question live, unfortunately, but we'll see if we can find something on that. Another question is, I notice you have recommended... Not recommended, yeah. Uh, the do not knock at the front door. Don't those who still knock seem to be suspect? I'm assuming, are they talking... If they're talking about uh, maybe door-to-door -door knockers collecting uh, money for charity... Uh, just make sure that if someone you you be, you'd know whether someone from charity is uh, like a Red Cross, they do a lot of advertising on television. So if they if you do get door to door, make sure you check their ID. They're normally wearing it around their neck. Uh, if you're still not happy, you don't have to donate. You can do it online or make a phone call and do it over, and do it over the phone. Uh, another question. Um... I can answer this one. Can I pass this info onto my Probus Club so it can be circulated? Yes, we'll be emailing the info from this uh, presentation to everyone who's registered. So that's yes to that question. Uh, next question, answer on, answer on codes or passwords. Use what works for you, like use different languages to mix them up. Oh, I, think, yes. I think someone's just suggesting something there. Yeah to really mix up your passwords mm. and make them very different so people can't That's crack right. them. Correct, yeah. And I think there was also use upper lowers and yes, other yes. symbols from the presentation, so yes. 
A lot of, uh, just, just quickly on that also, you find now sometimes when you're changing passwords, they want you to use uppercase and lowercase and a number and an X, you know, and a symbol. So they, they, they are slowly changing that, that way in how to actually log on to your accounts. They'll, they'll change it. So More questions. Are there any charts that show the dollar amounts recovered from scammers following reporting these crimes to authorities? No. Any law enforcement success in locating and prosecuting scammers? Not here. Well, that's not part of what I do, but I don't have any charts. But they do, from time to time, get the scammers. Obviously difficult for the ones overseas. If your scam happens overseas where you've sent money overseas, unfortunately, we, get, we don't investigate it here in Australia. And if it's a, a very large sum of money, well, then they have, they have uh, authorities, most likely uh, possibly the federal police, who would, uh, would investigate that with the country that's involved and they have to ta a task force in that respect but locally uh no we we don't uh, we don't um investigate anything that's happened overseas and with success it just all depends on what kind of scam it actually is that that's the thing if it's uh money it's gone into an account we need to actually prove that it actually was a scam Okay, thanks for that. More questions coming in. I receive endless SMS messages asking to press on a link and they all and they're all coming from different phone numbers. I receive at least once one a day and I really want to stop them. How do I do this? If they're coming from all different numbers, it is very difficult to stop. The only um, as I say, you can only block it on your phone depending on where, where the text message is coming, what's the phone number, is it coming from overseas. It, it, very difficult, very difficult to stop. I get them too. It's something where you just have to delete them. Just don't yep. click on the link. That's the most important thing. Yep, I get them too. And, yes, they're always from different numbers. It's not yeah. like you can just block them from yeah. one number. They seem to have some random number generating yeah. thing from their end. Yeah. Uh, more questions. Google provided password when it is after, offered after forgotten password or use your own composition. Okay, I think this is a question around should you use offered passwords? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Or use your own? Use your own or, yeah, I wouldn't be, I don't know what Google provided a password. I don't, um, no. I wouldn't use a Google provided password. I would be using your own. Okay, thank you for that. Um, here we go, more questions. Some doctors calls come from, un, from an unknown caller number to clarify, ask your medical center if waiting for such a call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're waiting for a call and if, if someone calls you from a doctor's surgery and you don't believe them, call that doctor, look, that, look the phone number up and call them yourselves. Then you can clarify it that way. Yep, that sounds like really good advice. Some more questions. Uh, suggestion on scam calls. I think someone's providing some info for us here. Often if you wait a few seconds before speaking, the scam call will hang up because I think the software they use waits for a response before connecting you. A real person will usually say hello to see that you are there. Um, so there's some advice from someone. And interesting question. This is the last question I can see on the Q&A is, why can't authorities trace the scammers' phones? Sometimes scammers, they use... Uh, they, they hide their actual phone numbers. It's not actually their real phone number that they're calling from or sending a message. They could be sending it from a computer. Um, if it's coming from, if sometimes they call them spoof numbers where they basically take on someone else's phone number and then they can use that number. So it is difficult to, to trace a phone. And again, it all depends on what what is it that you're actually trying to trace? Have you actually been scammed? This is the actual information you need to, 
If you have been scammed, you can provide that information to police and then we'll investigate it. So I can't really answer that question. It just all depends on whether you've been scammed and or whether you've just sent whether they've sent a text message. So Okay, just another question's popped up. Is there any way the local telcos could stop calls from foreign numbers appearing local? That's an interesting question. No, I don't know. You'd have to speak with a telecommunications company with that. Oh, I couldn't tell you. Mm, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Mm. Um, anyway, we've got here we just a few more minutes for some more questions. Should Google ask the person's birthday? That's a very specific question. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in regards to that. Um, are they security questions that they've forgotten their password and asking them security questions? That possibly could be it. Uh, sometimes if you forget your password and you want to reset your password, it'll ask you security questions, which you've nominated when you first opened your uh, account. Or uh, So if you can't remember it then uh, if you can't remember your, your passwords your, your security questions that might be a problem so that could be what that could be referring to yep I think we might have needed a little bit more context mm. to that particular question but um, someone's asked is it safe to click on voicemail if perhaps a scam I don't uh, I if you're referring to if someone's left a message and you're and on your phone where you've got the keypad and it's got voicemail and you're ringing your own voicemail that's checking your messages, that's safe. It's clicking on a link. Don't click on a link to say this is your voicemail. You have to go to your phone itself and on your keypad it'll show voicemail and then that's fine. Okay. All right, look, we might wrap up the questions there. That's the finish of the questions. There was great information there, lots of interesting questions. Um, Sandra, I'd like to thank you for presenting to us today during Scams Awareness Week. This is a big issue for all of us, mm. not only seniors, um, to keep on top of. Um, I thank you for the audience for attending. We had over 80 attending, which is a great number. I also thank Hornsby Council Sector Support uh, for develop uh, for hosting it on on the their Zoom account, and all the other Northern Sydney councils for publicising this particular webinar. So we've got a good number. Um, what we'll be doing, as I said before, I'll be emailing. Um, it won't be a scam email. It'll be seniors at Northern Beaches email. Um, a copy of the presentation, a, um, a recording some handouts and also some links to resources on the crime prevention resources on the police's website. There'll also be a very, very, very short questionnaire, which I hope you'll be able to answer because we'd like to get your feedback. So it's 11.29, we're right on time. Uh, again, thank you to our presenter and thank you to everyone for attending today. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. <laughs>